Today I'm going to be building spark plug wires uh, for an outboard using the uh, MSD mini uh, wire stripper and crimper. It's for 8.5 millimeter wire which is uh, some of the best wire that you can get uh, from MSD. So without uh, any further ado let me go ahead and get started. The benefits of building your own spark plug wires is that you can customize the lengths and you can also customize what angle the, uh, the terminals are pointed relative to the wire. Uh, so one of the things I've already done is I've measured how much wire I'm going to need and I've got uh, one wire is nine and a quarter inch the other one is eight inches but there's also a built-in cutting guide on these units and you want to add enough wire to your measurements so it's almost three quarters of an inch you want to add enough wire to the measurements so that you'll be able to strip the wire and then keep the overall length the same this is going to leave me with an overall length uh, for the first wire of 10 and 3 quarter inches. And I'll go ahead and do that now. Mark this right here, 10 and 3 quarters. So I'll go ahead and mark this with a Sharpie. And uh, 9 and a half inches. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and pre-cut the wire at those points. I'm going to use a scissor type of tool and uh, this will give us a nice clean cut. Uh, if you use electrician's pliers you're probably going to squish the wire some which is probably not ideal. So here's the two lengths of wire. Got one that is nine and a half inches, the other one is ten and three quarters. This tool comes with a built-in strip guide and you'll see there's two different sizes. It is sold as an 8.5 millimeter cutting tool or guide so we'll insert the uh, spark plug wire into the correct size guide then using an exacto knife or a razor blade I'm going to press down on it and I'm rocking it back and forth for a little bit but I'm going to turn it and this is going to strip it down to the wire without nicking the wire itself This should pop off nice and neat. And there we have it. Nice clean cut end. I'll repeat the process for the other end. Then we'll begin with crimping on the uh, terminals. Alright, there's a little bit of a fiber left over, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. These will end up being bent back. And according to the guide, you want to leave a small gap. This is in their installation manual. So if you notice, there's a small gap right here. Let me show this on the other end. There's that small gap. Right, right there. Now the manual also calls for um, a small an eighth of an inch. Uh, when you set this in place, I'll just show this as a guide, they want an eighth of an inch protruding. And as it, as it turns out, there's a little crimp in here, a little indentation. And that is right at about an eighth of an inch. You can actually check that against, against this. So looking at it, from where the one starts to the left, an eighth of an inch stops right there. So that's going to make it easier uh, to do this. I'll do this again. An eighth of an inch, right about where the uh, the crimp starts. So we'll end up uh, laying this in here with the wire bent against the back of the uh, the terminal. But one of the things you'll notice: these terminals are not going to fit in there. So what I like to do is take a pair of pliers, give them a little bit of a crimp just to uh, tighten them up. But before I do that, the manual also specifies to put almost a 90 degree bend in these little uh, tabs. So using a pair of needle nose, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just grab it tightly, give it a little bit of a bend.
and that's to ensure that the uh, terminal gets a good grip and grabs the wire. This is not quite 90 degrees, but I don't want to push it. These are MSDNs, they're right angle, but you notice there's two little ridges along the back of them, and what that does is when you crimp the entire unit together, uh, those ridges really ensure that you have a good electrical contact, and uh, which is important, of course, if you're doing spark plug wires. There's that eighth of an inch. You see here to the edge of that, that's an eighth of an inch. Let me uh, crimp this down a little bit so it'll get, it'll fit into the die. And this will go into the die in this position. Got it in there a little too far. Right there. Looks good. Let's get the other half of the die in place. Notice two tabs. Those two tabs are designed to uh, sit on the lips of the vise. So let's bring the vise back into play. They fit. And again, I'll tighten down on this. And let me just readjust this. I really want it to sit flush as much as possible. The uh, manual that comes with this uh, crimp strip uh, strip tool, the mini crimp strip tool, does say to be careful not to over tighten as. Uh, That could damage the components. So that looks like we got a pretty solid crimp there. Um, yeah, I like the way this is going to work. I've got them angled just right. This will go on the coil on this end, and this side will go into the spark plug. So they're they're uh, they're sort of a right angles at each other to each other, which is perfect. Once you have both ends crimped off and ready to go. One important aspect of this is check for continuity. I have an ohmmeter and it's set for uh, continuity testing. And I've got continuity on both ends. So this one is, uh, is a go. Step is going to be putting the uh, boots on. Uh, these boots are pretty tight, so this is going to be a little bit of a fun exercise. Uh, I have dielectric grease, and one of the things I will do is give. Uh, the terminal itself actually and the wire uh, healthy coat this is going to help us get it into there and it's also going to protect against moisture once the uh, once it's installed so here's the boot I'm using um, it's a tight hole so this is going to be interesting um, let's get that in there All right, there we have it. We have one complete spark wire set. Uh, well, not a set, but we have one complete spark wire for this outboard. So I've completed two wires, and um, I have to say that this little tool is an excellent investment. If you're not mass producing a lot of wires, the more expensive crimp tools are really not a, a necessity. Uh, they're pretty large expense. I've seen them going for fifty, sixty dollars and up. Uh, this particular tool is was ten dollars and it's slightly under ten dollars you can probably find it for uh, for that price with shipping and if you're doing the low volume of wires, wires it is a good investment it uh, did a good job uh, the instructions are pretty clear and I would highly recommend this tool to anybody that that needs to build spark plug wires on a one-time basis or even just uh, uh, once here and there so I'll be keeping this in my tool chest and thank you MSD